What's up everybody? We are live and the cameras are way better this time if you can't tell. <coughs> we did two cooking demos before but we just did them in the Zoom conference room. They weren't live on Facebook and I've been slowly improving the quality of the gear that I've got here and now I'm pretty happy with it. Um, as you can see the image here is nice and clear. The lighting is good. So anyway, we're here today to cook some food. I want to make a, what we used to call chicken noodle soup, but it's not, I guess. It's just noodle soup. <clears throat> so I've got some veggies out. We'll chop. I'll talk about chopping. I've got several questions that I'll answer too. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Well, what else can I tell you first? Uh, these live videos, I'll tell you this. I want to do these live videos on a regular basis at least two or three a month, but what I want to do is a subscription. Um, when I was posting before, a lot of you were saying, oh, we can't tune in live. I wish we could buy a ticket and show up to the, to the live video, but we can't be there live. We want to see the replay. And I didn't have the replays available at the time because I didn't yet have a way to record them in any kind of good quality. So now I have that capability. So this video I'm going to put up on YouTube as sort of a promo, if you will. But eventually, once I've got a few up there for people to see and realize it's something they might like, I want to do like a monthly subscription that will include showing up live uh, in like the Zoom conference room where I was doing before, but also access to the replays through my website, through the Well Your World website. Um, so not all of them are going to go on YouTube for free, but I'm still going to keep making YouTube videos for free like normal, all that good stuff. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to just chop up some onion, celery, we've got some multicolored carrots, and then I'm also got, got some salad stuff over here. So while the soup is getting ready, we'll make a salad because you got to start with salad, right? So anyway, let's start with some questions. Um, well, actually, let me just start chopping. I'll tell you how I'm going to chop this onion. We've got a nice close-up shot of the cutting board. Oh, that is so pretty. So anyway, here's my knife, nice and sharp. I'm going to take both ends off the onion. I know some people like to leave the root. I'm not one of those people. I feel like it just slows me down. So I'll just cut the two sides off and half it, and then I'll peel the uh, outer skin right off here, and throw that in my dump bowl. I think I'll do like at least one onion. These are pretty big onions. I'm going to make a big pot of soup. I want it to last me. When I cook, I try to make it so that I don't have to do it for every single meal, so I'll make a whole bunch at once and then I'll have enough food to eat for at least a day or two. I'm going to bring this shot out just a tiny bit. Little adjustments. There we go. Okay. So I'll probably use like one and a half onions. Maybe I'll save half this raw onion for the uh, salad. Okay. So the first question that we got was, how long have you been eating plant-based from Elsie? And have you always been the chef in the house? I've been eating plant-based, well, I've been vegan since 2013. It was the beginning of 2013. So first of all, let me show you. I'm just going to slice through this onion, okay? A bunch of little slices. This is where some people like the root on because it helps keep everything together. But what I'm doing is using these fingers over here to hold it together. And then I'm just slicing down the center and making lots of little slices. Then I'll just turn it. It'll stay together pretty well. If your knife's sharp, you're not going to have any trouble. If your knife's dull, then you're going to be shoving onion all over the place. So it kind of sucks. So now just all you got to do is slice through the other direction and you're ready to go. So yeah, I've been plant-based since, or I've been vegan since 2013, but I had really, and, and the reason I first went vegan was for health, but I didn't really know how to be healthy at the time. So I was eating a lot of processed junk, um, a lot of french fries, 
a lot of the fake vegan meat and I was getting fat but I thought I was healthy <laughs> and I didn't feel all that he healthier. What I actually did in 2010, I was not vegan obviously and I started juicing and I felt a lot better juicing actually but I was still eating the other way. I actually did like a, almost a two week juice fast after watching Fat Sick and Nearly Dead like many people on their first juice fast and it went really well. I felt excellent but I, I didn't have it all figured out. So anyway, in 2013, I started eating better. I thought um, I was still juicing back then. I was still juicing quite a lot. So I was feeling better than I was just on a standard American diet, but I wasn't feeling anything like now. And in, it was in 2016, I'll save this for salad. It was in 2016 that I had, my mom had a high cholesterol health scare. And I had already read the China study. The China study is kind of what turned me vegan, but he doesn't address oil in the China study at all, T. Colin Campbell. So I, you know, all, all you, the main focus of the China study is animal protein, right? So I cut out all the animal protein and I thought I was good. But he leaves out all the oil and processed stuff. Um, in his next book, Whole, he kind of touches more on that, but Whole still didn't like get it through my head for me. So then it was reading the starch solution. Um, when my mom had this high cholesterol, she was either gonna go ha on, have to go on a statin or she was going to figure it out. And we decided, okay, let's just figure it out. This is a lot of onion, well, whatever. And so we read the starch solution together. Carrots, all I'm gonna do for carrots is take the top and then this broken off bottom side. I will split it in half. Again, a sharp knife helps. Because these are big chunks, I'm going to quarter it this way as well. You can make them as big or small as you want, however you like your onions in your soup, right? And then the motion here is just, you've all seen it before, keep the front end down. I like this knife, it's, it's pretty flat on the bottom. Um, I'm kind of used to that motion. Some people like a more curved knife. I'll show you my other knife. Um, this obviously has more of a radius, like a circumference around the end, whatever the word is. And so you're gonna get, you're gonna have to come back, right, more in order to get through your cuts. So if you like the, that really, the, a lot of that wrist action, this rounded knife will be more your style. I've gotten used to this flat one, so I'll just hit the bottom of the cutting board and I'll know I'm there. Boom, boom, boom. So get, like all I would do if you're brand new to chopping is just practice this motion and practice using your knuckles here. I'm kind of gonna give you a dramatic reenactment, but essentially you're gonna use your knuckle to control how far over your knife's gonna be. And so as you move over, you're going to just drag it along. Some people will drag just the, the food. So like if you're cutting this, they, they will actually push the food under the knife. I never got into that habit. I think that's, that may be the more proper way of doing it, but I'll actually move this hand along the carrot and, let, and keep bringing the knife along. So it's really whatever you like. And then if your knife's sharp, you can get through this carrot pretty easy. If it's not, it might be annoying. And then you, if, it, if it's not sharp enough, then just do less carrot. I mean, I'm even struggling a little here just because it's dense. But that's a pretty carrot. Okay, where was I? So the cholesterol scare, we read the starch solution and my cholesterol dropped 40 points. My mom's cholesterol dropped 40 points. At that time, my cholesterol was like 175. Um, I've had it over 200 before. I, I, I uh, don't remember why I would have known my cholesterol much earlier than that. Oh yeah, because I, when I was doing all the juice fasting, I was uh, checking my blood work once in a while for fun. So I had already started doing that. And, but I was sometimes, oh, and also donating blood. When you donate blood, uh, they give you this like courtesy total cholesterol reading. I'm gonna 
chop this in half because this part is way thicker than this part, so I don't really need to split this part in half, but I will split this part in half, and now I'll have these three pieces, okay? And I'm not very careful. I don't really care about the size because it's just food. Um, so I was getting cholesterol readings. I know my cholesterol was over 200 at one point, but when I got started with the starch solution, my mom and I decided, and, and Elise too, we said, okay, we're going to do one month. It's, it's going to be miserable. We probably won't stick with it, but let's just see if this is a thing. And so we decided to do one month totally oil free. Um, we weren't SOS free. I'm still not SOS free. Um, I try to make sure that my cooking is because I always want to apply to the least common denominator, the most strict that anybody in our group's going to be. And then you can easily add salt or whatever if you're still eating salt, like at the table I'll sprinkle salt on. So we decided to do one month. We actually did the first few days totally SOS free, I remember. And it was too hard. I, I decided this was my first time. I just thought, okay, I'm going to do just O free. And so we did, and my mom too, she was like, man, this is, this is hard because the food doesn't taste that good. And we were used to really still, we cooked at home a lot, but it was still very much processed food. Like most of our meals had the fake meat in it. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, pretty much every meal. Uh, and so... We did, we decided on oil free for one month. This was our first month and it took me probably seven to, dead, to 10 days. And I was like, oh my God, I felt so much different. I felt so much clearer, so much uh, better after I ate because I've always eaten till I'm pretty full, more full than our favorite doctors would recommend that I be at the end of a meal. Um, but I would always feel kind of not that great after. Uh, when it's oil and when it's junk. So this was the first time that I was like, oh, okay, so you can actually still eat as much as I eat and not feel like trash after. So that was a big thing for me. I knew right away that I was never going to go back. That was um, in 2016. We started in April and on my birthday, in May of 2016 was when the, we got our blood work done and the, both my mom's cholesterol and my cholesterol had dropped by 40 points. So, or by, what did I say? Yeah, 40 points. Because I was down to like 135 total cholesterol. How much, how are we doing here? This is onions, carrots. I still need some more carrots. So let's just keep rocking and rolling here. Um, so then I knew like this is this is the way I'm like I understood health a lot better after reading that book. I started to lose weight in that first month. I lost like 15 pounds, uh, which I had no idea that would happen because I didn't think that I really needed it. I was at, my BMI was 25, which is Dr. Furman would say that that is overweight because he thinks anything over 23 is overweight. Um, but the standard medical systems would say that 25 is just at the upper range of normal. So I was getting like a little chubby, but not in a way that I was really aware of. Um, like my pant size was the same as always. And so I lost 15 pounds in that one month. Then the next month, I, I'm giving you way more detail than you asked for. But the next month I was, we went backpacking. And I ate on our road trip to go backpacking. I still, okay, many of you know that I have a pretty serious potato chip addiction. Kettle chips, jalapeno kettle chips especially. And let's move on to the celery. So I, we're just going to take the bottom, flip it, take the top off. This stuff, the carrot tops and the celery, probably not the onion peel because the peel is really bitter, but the carrots and celery are really good for um, making your own veggie broth. Many of you know I have a video on making your own veggie broth from your uh, kitchen scraps. Just freeze your kitchen scraps and uh, when you've got lots all built up, you can make veggie stock out of them. 
And then if you want to go to the next level, you can make that veggie paste like I made in a YouTube video, which is just taking your veggie stock and reducing it down significantly into almost a syrup. And then when that syrup settles to room temperature, it's like a paste. And that takes up even less space and you can just keep it in the freezer. Anyway, check it out. So. We went backpacking, I ate a bunch of kettle chips, we ate some uh, crappy, um, what are those, uh, freeze-dried food, mountain house, alpine air, whatever they are. They have a few vegan ones. All I'm doing is I want to get a consistent size of piece and when my stock is big down here and small down here, I'll just like split half of it. So I've got like a split here. That's my little celery style. But again, I'm like really just, I just go at it. I don't really care that much. Um, so I ate a bunch of that crappy food on our backpacking trip. So like, for, and then I was sort of still in the addiction of chips. So I was doing chips every once in a while. That that first month, I was super strict, like super strict. And then, and we didn't. I didn't drink any booze, none of that, because at the time I was drinking every day. I mean, that probably attributed to the weight loss uh, significantly. But I was drinking probably every day. And so anyway, I went back to having potato chips. I don't think I really went back to drinking much at all after that first month, but I can't really remember for sure. But my cholesterol went back up to 175 over the course of like four to six weeks. Because at this time, I was still really um, obsessing over how, how could this be working so well. So I was getting my blood tested like every month, regardless of what I was doing. Um, to check my cholesterol and triglycerides and all that stuff. And I don't like using a bench scraper. Uh, people give me a hard time sometimes about scraping the food up with the knife, but I sharpen the knife so often that it doesn't matter that I'm dulling it a little bit. So I don't, I don't like having to put it down and then grab a plastic spatula and pick the food up and then get back to the knife. I just like holding the knife. So my cholesterol went up to 175 again, and I knew for sure that that was uh, this way of eating is the way. My mom continued to improve. And same thing, as she got less strict, she could see that um, her numbers were getting worse. And so it was pretty obvious that we needed to stick to this way of eating. So that is why we eat whole foods, like the food we're making here, minus, I'm gonna use some whole wheat pasta, but whole wheat pasta is, you know, pretty good for a whole starch. Um, calorie density wise, whole wheat pasta, once you rehydrate it, is pretty much the same calorie density as all the other starches. So, um, but I know like Dr. Furman doesn't like it because I, at the conference a week or two ago, he, he specifically leaves out any kind of processed or flour of any kind. But McDougal is good with it, as many of you know. Have I always been the chef in the house? Well, I've always liked to cook, so. But Elise and I both cook, and always have. Uh, my mom, I grew up, my mom was the chef in the house, and she was always making really good food. We just didn't know at the time that we should have been leaving out the animal products <laughs> and the oil. Allie asks, also known as Lexi, any life hacks, pro tips, secret shortcuts for this lifestyle? Well, I guess I've shared some of them already, making veggie stock from your veggie scraps, um, you know, all these little hacks that we do to do this type of eating well. I needed to turn the air down because it's a little warm in here. Okay, what's next? So those are my three items. We got celery, carrots, onions. All I'm going to do is heat this pot up back here and we'll water saute. Also, since we're making soup, I was meant to turn this kettle on before, but I'll put a, the kettle on with full of water because I'm going to add that to the soup and if it's already hot, that'll just save me time. So while I'm chopping, I'll put the kettle on. That's a life hack. Lexi, there you go. Get the water hot so that when you add it to the soup, you'll be eating it sooner. <laughs> okay. 
I've also got some peas that we'll throw in at the end because peas don't need that long. Let's keep going. I will continue to tell you the life hacks as we go, if I think of them. Um, and you know I tell you all of them as I think of them in the Facebook group. So, Cherry asks, what is your reaction or how do you react when other people say things like fish oil tablets are good for you? I focus on lean meats like chicken. Drink milk, it's good for you. I need to lose weight so I need to up my exercise without any regard to diet change, etc. I was with family this weekend and for the sake of peace I just nodded and kept my mouth shut. I think you did the right thing. Do you feel obligated to share your knowledge? I went through a time, so let me continue my story because it's relevant. Let's go back here. Check out the stove cam. Um, I'll just add a little water here. And when it's spurting pretty good, you know that you can add everything. Um, we shouldn't need to add too much water, but as your water evaporates while you're doing all this, um, just keep adding a little bit more. And all we're doing here is water sauteing. So let everything get hot in here, and then it'll start to uh, saute real nice. So you'll also notice that I didn't measure anything. I don't really do recipe cooking. I just eyeball it. I can see in that bowl like X amount of onion, carrots, celery. If, if it was awful then, and it tasted too oniony, then I know next time that my calibration of what I'm looking at in the bowl should change slightly so that I see less onion and more carrots and celery. I don't, I've never had it come out where I'm like, oh, this is too much onion. So I just kind of wing it. I usually don't like to leave a part of a vegetable. So like since I'm doing salad, I left this onion, but if I wasn't doing salad, I probably would just throw it in the soup and be like, whatever, we're, we're onion heavy today. Um, because it doesn't really affect the flavor that much for me in a negative way. So that's kind of how I roll on that. So anyway, how we doing? Give it a stir. So in, where was I going with that? In the, the first book that uh, got me into all this, like I was saying, was The Starch Solution. And I went on for months where I realized, oh my gosh, I have literally the key to health in my hand. I can't wait to tell everyone ever about it because they're all going to want it. I mean, what are you, nuts? If I could tell you, show you the data, this is what happened with cholesterol, my weight. I know it's not about the cholesterol, but this is a marker for something more serious. Uh, I see what it did to my mom. Uh, then Nick started doing it a few months after I started doing it, and he was having amazing results, plus every testimonial ever that we see about this, which, yeah, I know, obviously the first-hand experience was a lot more valuable for me than just relying on the testimonials. Um, that you would read like when you're reading the book or whatever, or researching it online. So I thought, oh my, all I have to do is present this information to everyone I've ever met and they'll all be healthy. Well, it wasn't working. Uh, people did not want to hear it. And I didn't anticipate that because my mind is like, I love being wrong because the more times I'm wrong, the more times I can get right. And so as, when I started with health, I started juicing but eating wrong. And then I went vegan because I knew that must be right. And then I did the starch solution. And now I care less about juicing, even though I think it's perfectly healthy and great. But I like to get it from whole food, mostly because I'm lazy. Uh, but I've always wanted to get the most right that I can. And other people aren't like that. They, if they aren't in a place in their lives where they're ready to give up these things that are so important to them, then they are not going to hear you. So Cherry, you probably did the right thing when you just told your family or when you kept your mouth shut. Added a little bit of water and keep on stirring. This kettle is noisy. Um, because they're not in a place where they're ready to change. They, like McDougal always says, they want good news about their bad habits. Let's start chopping some salad stuff, hey? Um, we'll use this bowl for salad. I've got, let's do some cucumber. I've got uh, for lettuce because I'm so lazy at cleaning, chopping, spinning lettuce. I just got those clamshell crates and I'll chop up some cucumber, onion. I've got some radishes here some cherry tomatoes, avocado. So anyway, 
I started to realize how psychologically challenging this way of eating is because nobody around you is interested. And in many cases, they're not just uninterested, they are damn right combative about it. And I know a lot of you out there have absolutely no one in your lives that is doing this right, that eat like you do. And it can be really hard. And I was realizing that it, and, and I have a pretty open extended family. And they weren't combative about it until I started saying, hey, why aren't you doing this? And so for a little while, I was like, you guys got to do this because it's the only way that you live long, healthy, and without drugs, and so that you can wipe your own butt when you're old. And uh, that just did, was not interesting for people. Sorry, I was on the wrong camera there. So here we are to the cucumber. So that was just not something that people wanted to hear. And um, so I started uh, looking deeper, and that's when I found the pleasure trap. And the pleasure trap, Dr. Lyle talks more about some of those, these psychological issues around this way of eating. And that book was super important for me. Um, it made me realize why people don't want to hear it why that I was being taken negatively instead of positively, which was my intention, and why I was, how I was letting it drive a wedge between me and my family members that weren't eating like me. And um, for cucumber, all I did was take the, excuse me, take the top and bottom off, slice it, kind of quarter it, and then chop it just like everything else. Cucumbers. Um, not so dense, so you can get through quite a lot of it all in one chop. So the pleasure trap was in, in, uh, just incredibly helpful for me, and I've made some videos about social pressure and all these things, but really when someone says, hey, you should eat um, fish oil, or I'm doing this thing, or I read the book Plant Paradox, and so, you know, I'm taking my lectin pills or whatever the hell it is, and I, if they're inquisitive, I mean, at the end of the day, it depends on the situation. If people are asking you about the way you eat and how it compares, and they're clearly showing, like I was, that they are interested in making some changes or refining what they're doing because they want, they're seeking perfection too. <laughs> By perfection, I just mean a, a good way of eating. None of us is perfect. Uh, what else do I want to do now back here? I'm going to add some stuff to this. Let's add some, now that this is getting pretty, you know, not like cooked tender, but nice. It's releasing a lot of its water. Um, it's starting to look nice. We'll add some spices. I'm going to add a, an offensive spoonful of garlic. Um, I would probably even do a little bit more. Let's do, I'm gonna go easy, I'm doing this easy style. So like, I've got this Italian blend. All I'm gonna do is like, I don't know, what is that, a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. And if it, if it needs more flavor, you just add some more later. Here's no salt seasoning. This is any kind of no salt seasoning. This one's from Costco. Again, I'll just do like a good handful it's a mix of 21 organic spices and ingredients from around the world. That's the key, is just everywhere in the world. I'm kidding. Some crushed red pepper, you may not want any of this. I want an amount that most people do not want. Stay away from my soup. Pepper. So I realized that I had to stop pushing my stuff on people. Uh, cherry. And if people are asking you and they really want to know about it, then great. Then just give her. And and you know, if if they're if just just feel the room, feel the room. If they want, if if there's someone who who would react and say, oh, I didn't know it wasn't good. I need to look that up some more. You can pretty much know if a person's going to react that way uh, before you open your mouth and tell them the way that they should do it. So that's my recommendation, um, is to read The Pleasure Trap for sure, 
I've got some videos on social pressure, but the easiest way to deal with people that, are, that you can tell aren't going to be open to you eating the way you do, and you can tell this from just using common sense and say if it's a dinner thing and you've got your food there, you can see how they're reacting to your food. If they're asking you why you're eating that way or if they're making jokes about it still, then they're not ready to be told that their fish oil is bad for them. So you should just not even bother. Uh, otherwise, it's going to just drive a wedge between you and the others that you're with. And if you don't care about them and this is the only time you're going to see them, uh, then you can, <laughs> you can just have at it if you want and uh, tell them that everything they're doing is wrong. But probably that's not going to be the best thing to do. Okay. This is looking pretty good over here. Let's go back. Now all I'm going to do is add, I've got my kettle here, and I'm going to add, I'm just going to guess, it's already hot water, so I don't have to wait for it to heat back up. Yeah, we'll do it all. This kettle holds like 16 cups. I would recommend getting a nice, big, massive kettle. I'll try to remember to like grab a link for that. The other thing, okay, I'm gonna crank this up now. I'm gonna turn the heat up, and we're almost at a boil, but I'll just get there. That was a lot of water, but I'm going to add some more stuff. I'm going to add some noodles. These are, all I've got here are the little shells. I like the, what's the, what are they called? The spirally ones? Um, I guess, again, just wing it here. I'm putting a few handfuls in. Um, I don't know, maybe another handful, whatever. Who cares? If you put in too much, then oh well, it still tastes the same. That bag has a hole in it. Okay, and then I've got some leftover brown rice. But I don't need to add that yet because it's already cooked, but I'm going to throw that in too eventually. And then I'll add a bag of frozen peas at the end too. Okay, so we are boiling. So now I'll just turn it down enough to allow my pasta to cook and my veggies to keep on cooking, like especially the carrots. Oh, I was going to put some potatoes in, but mm, Okay, let's move on. I hit that question pretty hard. River, do you ever wonder why most people are fast to reject anything you might say to them about why eating meat, eggs, dairy is unhealthy? I guess we kind of hit that um, pretty well. Misty, have you had a blood test to check your cholesterol and LDL levels? If so, would you share with the group? Yeah, I, well, I haven't had a really a detailed one done since almost a year. It was last August that I actually went and got blood drawn just so I could get some test results. But I have donated blood and when you donate blood, like I was saying before, they will give you a, let's do some radishes. They will give you a total cholesterol reading. I don't know if they do that, if they would test your total cholesterol for any reason, like, or if they're literally just doing it as a courtesy or if they have a deal with the medical industry so that if your cholesterol is high, they can try to bring you in and get you into a statin. I don't know. That's a conspiracy. But uh, my cholesterol is around 130. As of May was the last one, and I did one in like January, and it was like right around 130, 130, 135 maybe. Um, radishes, you can slice whatever way you like. I'll just take the little... Um, root off the bottom with the knife, flip it and take the top off. And then I, I don't like to chop things when they're round and can roll all over because that's when you can chop your hand off. So I'll just half it and then I can set it flat. And so once it's flat you can either slice it just like that or you can uh, quarter the radish essentially, half it again, right? and then you can have little pieces. So it's whatever, whatever you like. I will just do half and slice, or I guess I'm quartering and slice. So yeah, my cholesterol is pretty good, but the, like I was saying, I, because I only got a total cholesterol reading, I don't know like what my LDL numbers are or my triglycerides or anything like that right now. So. Um, maybe I'll do one soon. I've wanted to test for 
uh, B12 and DHA, EPA, omegas, whatever. But I haven't done that yet, so like I'm taking the B12 supplement, as you all should be if you eat like this, and I'm taking a Dr. Furman's little DHA EPA liquid as well. But I don't know if I'm low on that, so I'm thinking, oh, well, I should check that out and see if I actually need to be taking it. But I was, the goal, when I talked to Dr. Goldhammer when I was at True North, which was what, back in last September, um, he said if you're eating a tablespoon of flax seeds a day and some walnuts or, and or some walnuts or whatever it is, then you probably aren't going to have a problem. Well, I'm not eating those things every day. When it comes to making sure that I'm eating certain foods, kind of like Gregor's Daily Dozen or something, it's just never going to happen with me. I can, I don't have the resolve to ensure that I'm eating the exact right things every day. It just isn't going to happen. G-bombs, it, it happens a lot of days, but it does not happen every day. So I uh, started taking the DHA liquid. Also, Gregor, in uh, one of his Nutrition Facts videos on YouTube, recommended that we vegans take that supplement. So that's what I do. So I, I'll, but if I get more blood work done, yeah, I'll share it with the group, no problem. I, like I was saying earlier, I was kind of obsessed with getting my blood checked once a month. Do you need to do that? No, I don't think so. If you're in a, in a risk zone and you want to know if the effort that you're putting forward is, is actually working, then it, yeah, do it. You know, it's worth, it's worth checking out, I think. I don't think it's going to give you bad information. I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't do it. Except that you have to spend money and go show up somewhere and stick a needle in your arm, which some people don't really enjoy. Um, I wouldn't say it's something that I love to do by any means. Whoops, wrong bowl. How we doing? Um, This is going to be pretty soupy. I added a lot of water. If you want it to be thicker, you could add in some red lentils, because red lentils kind of cook into a mush. So that could be a way to uh, thicken it back up if you add too much water. You could also add some frozen corn, or you could blend some frozen corn and add it in, and that would kind of thicken things up. I don't usually add any kind of thickeners to any kind of one pot soup or stew or thing that I make to thicken it up. I don't really think that's necessary, but this is the way I cook. This, I just cook, I just grab vegetables out of the fridge. I don't know what I have before I get started. I have a, a shopping list that I use every week uh, in my head that I could, um, I could make and provide for you, but you know, it's, it's pretty standard stuff. I'll make sure I've got potatoes, onions, broccoli. Um, I'll make sure I've got zucchinis, any kind of summer squash. I'll make sure I've got some bell pepper. I'll make sure I've got cauliflower, uh, pico stuff, you know, whatever it is. And so if I'll, I'll just glance in the fridge before I go to the store. And if I'm good on those things, then I don't get them. <laughs> and then all week, I'll just say, okay, what do I want to do that I haven't done? Is it going to be some kind of a bean, one pot bean with zucchini and various spices, and that's a meal for a couple, at least a day? Or do I want to make this kind of a soup, a starchy soup? I feel like I should put potatoes in there. Why don't we do a couple potatoes? We've got time. It's going to uh, keep cooking nicely. I'm not going to eat it right away, so the noodles might get a little bit overcooked. I'm going to wash these potatoes, pardon me. But I don't care, I love mushy noodles. Sometimes when I make my starch blaster, I'll put noodles in, and compared to the lentils and rice and everything in the Instant Pot, the noodles will be complete mush. 
by the time they come out. But somehow, you know how the Instant Pot, like they, the noodles keep their form until you start stirring it a whole bunch. And then, so I just love the texture of the mushy noodle. So I don't mind that the noodles will be more done than say these potatoes. So potatoes, same thing I was saying, it's, if it's round, then it's dangerous. So I'll just slice off one side and now I can set it flat and it's still. And then you can just slice into potato patties. And then I'll just take each one, make, you know, slice it into lengths and then go the other direction. Simple as that. I like potatoes in this soup. I was getting lazy and I shouldn't do that, especially when people are watching. <clears throat> okay, did I leave anything out of that story about blood results? No, I don't think so. Let's move on. Okay. This one's a long one from Karen, new member of the group. Hi, Karen. Um, let me kind of abridge this. She's trying to lose a little bit more weight, 10 more pounds, and she's been eating really well. And half plate of starch, half plate of non-starch. Does she need to get rid of oh, sweet cravings? Sweet cravings, okay. So if you are, I, I talk about this in some of my calorie density videos, but it's all about calorie density, right? If you eat nothing but non-starchy vegetables, which are 100 calories per pound, you're going to uh, have to eat a lot of pounds in order to get, say, 2,000 calories. So in other words, keep slicing these ends. So um, potatoes, your starchy veg is more like four to 600 calories per pound. So if you wanna get, um, the, the bulk of our calories are going to come from our starches because we're not gonna get enough calories from eating uh, just raw non-starchy vegetables like salad. But the great thing about salad is it fills you up physically. So if you start every meal with salad, which is very low calorie density, but very high nutrient density, which is very healthy, then you are going to get really good nutrients, but you're also going to take up a bunch of space in your stomach. And if you're like me, that's not going to satiate you entirely. It's going to make you feel, you know, a little more full, obviously, but I'm still going to need to finish with my starches, like potatoes and whole wheat pasta, quinoa, lentils, beans, rice, corn, peas. So if you are hitting a plateau and you still want to lose 10 more pounds, could it be sugar? Yeah. Could it be dates? Yeah. Dates are what, 1,500 or 1,800 calories per pound? No. Is it less than that? I can't remember. But dates kind of dry like that are definitely higher in calorie density compared to four to 600 calories a pound or 100 calories a pound. So you could either reduce your on your sweetness but if, if sweets are important to you and you know you you want to enjoy your sweet stuff like oat clusters dates aren't that bad they can be for some people i understand that they they can uh cause some people to overeat and that would be a problem but what you could try is say going from 50 50 starch and non-starch on the plate you could go say to 75-25 and you could try to get more full on non-starchy veg. And then you would eat less starch. So you'd, you'd be getting the same amount of physical bulk. Your plate still has a bunch of roughage on it. But now because it's coming from more lower calorie density foods, you're going to get full by eating less calories. So you haven't calorie restricted, which is crazy, we know that. Uh, and unsustainable, but you have reduced your calories just because you've chosen to eat differently. This is why I always recommend if, you're, if your goal is weight loss, well, you should do this anyway, but if your goal is weight loss, then you should absolutely start every meal with huge salad, non-starchy veg, salad bar type of stuff. Let's put this in. Okay, I'm a little low on the heat, so we'll go up a little. Okay, that's looking a little more 
to my liking as far as thickness, um, veg to juice ratio, okay? So we'll let that keep rolling. I'll turn it up a little bit because we added the cold potatoes. So always start your meals with a big salad, then move on to the more calorie dense items like the starches, four to 600 calories per pound. Also there's your fruit, that's around, what is it? Like uh, 300 calories a pound, 400 calories a pound. And then don't eat too much of the nuts, seeds, avocados, what we call the overt fats. Nuts, seeds, avocados, coconut, soy, those are all whole foods, they're perfectly healthy, but, but they're going to take up less space in your stomach and be more calories. So you're not going to get satiated off of these things, but they're gonna provide really rich flavor, hence the higher calorie density. Um, obviously, uh, Dr. Furman is pro nuts, whereas uh, Dr. McDougall encourages less nuts, simply because of weight loss goals. Most people that go into the McDougal program are trying to reverse heart disease, need to reduce the calories significantly, get rid of the excess fat, and so getting rid of nuts is going to help with that at some point for some people. So you have to find a, a, a mix that's going to work for you. And that may be eating some dates, but eating less starch. That may be eating the same 50-50 starch uh, veg plate, but getting rid of the dates or sweets, or um, you may have a binge thing going on like I do. Uh, Dr. Lyle talks about uh, binge the cram circuit. He's got a really good video up about the cram circuit and how we have the conditioned, we're conditioned to binge because we're used to it and in our evolution we, you know, always were trying to get as many calories as possible because we didn't know when the next meal was going to happen. These are all, you know, things that our brain does well is learn how to binge and then do it every single night on three batches of oat clusters at a time. <laughs> so, that is, that is what you've got to do. Every time you hit a plateau and, you wanna, and you're not losing the way you want to, take, take another look, reevaluate your rule system, do a new 30-day 30, 30 rules where you're eating, you know, just the examples that I already said, and then see, did that, did that help? Is that, did you feel well emotionally and physically during that 30-day trial? And do you want to apply this indefinitely uh, in order to, you're not going to keep losing weight forever, but you may get to a point where you just are maintaining and so you can maybe, you can um, safely add in some more of the avocado, coconut, more nuts, whatever. Uh, but like Dr. Furman would say, reduce your starch, eat more nuts, and McDougall would kind of say the opposite. And I think that both are probably close enough as far as health that you'd be safe doing either one. And that's why a lot of people like one and a lot of people like the other doctor, hence the video that I made um, summarizing that recently. So, um, let me check this over here. Nice. Cherry, do you think people who have been vegan since birth would have the same gas issues on bean consumption as those who are transitioning to the plant-based lifestyle? I'm not sure, um, but I know gas was worse for me before I went whole food plant-based than after. I mean, everybody's got some gas from the food that they eat. It's, it shouldn't be, uh, if it's like really bad, I would talk to a, a plant-based doctor because maybe Maybe there's some elimination that you can do to get certain, if it's beans for you, I don't know. But if it's like that much of a problem. Uh, but I don't know, I, I've heard the doctors say that gas has a lot to do with developing a healthy gut microbiome. So at the beginning during your transition, you might, uh, you might have some gas because your body isn't adjusted yet to the way that you're eating now. So, and I think that's normal. Um, give it a few months and you should have less gas. Uh, I, I, like I said, I know my gas is way better than like before when I was eating all the processed junk. And it wasn't just gas, you, it was smelly. You, I was just not as healthy. So, I, I don't, but I, as far as if you did this since birth, would you be more accustomed or whatever? I, you know, I don't know. The idea is that once you have a healthy gut microbiome, because you're eating the right foods, the whole foods that establish this, the right bacteria, that you should then level out and it shouldn't be an issue for you. If it is, I would definitely talk to a plant-based doctor. You can contact True North 
You could do a consultation with Dr. Goldhammer for free there, or you can contact one of the doctors there to do like a paid one hour Skype call or phone call where you can talk about what you're going through and they can make uh, recommendations. They have MDs, they have NDs, naturopathic doctors, um, any number of, of people that you could discuss that with. Debbie's asking if I eat tofu. Yeah, I eat tofu. I don't eat very much tofu, but I don't think it's bad. I mean, it's, it's higher in fat, obviously, because soy is higher in fat than, say, other beans. Let's cut some tomatoes. Sometimes when I'm doing salad, can you see this? Eh, not really. Sometimes when I'm doing salad, I will leave out the tomatoes, so I'll do all this kind of dry stuff like the cucumbers, radishes, mushroom, onion, and then I'll add the tomato when I'm about to eat it or when I'm going to toss the dressing with everything together. And that'll just stop it from getting soggy so that I can make a big salad, keep it in the fridge either in a bag or a big container or whatever, and then mix it all together with dressing and tomatoes at the end. However, I'm not doing that right now. I'm going to throw everything together and I will we'll probably have it eaten today. So the way I do the tomatoes is uh, and this is again a really nice one for having a sharp knife. But all I do is cut them lengthwise and then cut them in half again. And you can, you don't have to, you can just cut them lengthwise if you want. But I will just buzz through them. And again, using my knuckles to try to control. I'll, I'll go in between my fingers like this for the long cut and then I'll switch sideways and use my knuckles to buffer the knife. And once you start doing that and you do, you know, it was like, it was Pico that got me really fast at chopping, but whatever your thing is that you like, do it a lot, practice the motions, like really try to get them the skills better. Like I was saying, practice this motion just by itself, you know, practice this motion by itself. I'll, I'll do some mushrooms and you can see how this is really effective. Um, we'll do this whole pint. Okay, so tofu I think is not, it's pretty lightly processed. I mean it is processed. I used to make my own tofu so I, at least I understand how the process is done. I can do it myself. It's so cheap to buy and it doesn't have any junk in it that, you know, it's sometimes it's just nice to buy it. You can get non-GMO soy tofu for like a buck or two per block. But the, the hint here is, the key is to use it as a condiment. Don't use it as a, as, like you would a starch, you know, as a, a centerpiece of your meal. Um, otherwise you could have weight issues, and if you don't have any weight issues and it doesn't matter, fine, but um, I, my recommendation is always to use it more as a condiment. I'm going to, cut this onion into like four, not the little slices, and then I will just slice it thin for the salad. Ooh, those are kind of big pieces. I was lazy. If you wanted to get like really good, you can take, I don't care that much, just like always, so whatever. But if you wanted to get really picky with your onion, you can just take a little piece and then just start practicing, right? Get the motion down and then start moving over and you can get really thin slices like that. And if you want, if you want it to be not so uh, thick, you can half that piece, turn it over and then really start practicing that dice if you like it more diced. So anyway, these pieces are still like too big for a salad, I think. So I'll just usually dice it the same way as I do everything else instead of slicing it. We don't always put raw onion in salad, but I had that extra half. So whatever. Let's check on the soup. I mean, this is pretty much done, I would say. Probably doesn't really need much rice. Maybe I'll leave it out because now with the potato and everything, it's pretty thick. And I'll just drop in 
these peas. And that's that. So turn it down to low. What I'll do if, if I've got the resolve to do it, um, I'll try to make something like this in the morning and then I can just like, oh, I'll turn this up to get it back to warm because of the frozen peas. And then I will eat it all day long. So you only have to cook once and you've got food for the whole day. It's, it's a handy thing to do, but it can be hard if you don't work from home like I do. So food prep is key. I mean, try to make it for dinner and then have leftovers. Let's do some uh, mushrooms. Dr. Furman likes the mushrooms cooked just slightly, just for a couple minutes. So let's do it. We'll saute them in uh, on the stove for a second. So with mushrooms, what I do is cut it in half, again so you've got a flat surface, and then I'll actually cut it right here. So I'll cut the top off kind of like that, and then I'll turn it, and this is where this motion of slicing is really good. Same thing, you're going to use your hand to control the knife, but now because you're not, because you're not doing this, you can still do this, right? Here we go, cutting the mushroom just like anything. That's fine. But because the mushroom is so um, soft, you can get through it so fast if you do this other thing. So you can just go like that and be done. So half the mushroom. Whoops, that was fast. And then just go like that. So practice that motion and mushrooms are nice for that. What else is nice for that? I don't know. I, I practically only use it for mushrooms. You feel me? Some people will, I mean, with the salad, they'll just slice the mushrooms and not make them quite so um, chopped. But whatever. Um, other things that uh, are not so processed, like tempeh, is good. Um, so we'll eat tempeh, we'll make a sandwich with tempeh, which is like kind of a lot of tempeh compared to when I say use it as a condiment. So we don't do that very often. Sometimes we'll crumble it up and make it into like a scramble with tempeh. Tempeh is just fermented soybeans. I've also done that myself. Again, sometimes I don't have the time to do all these things, but I have done it and it works very well. Seitan, the pe people like seitan with the vital wheat gluten, I'm not, I feel like that stuff's way more processed, even though the process that, it, it, that it's undergone is not very, it's not much, it's like getting, you know, it's, but it's separating the whole food. So, so is tofu technically because you're blending it up and you're straining out the solids and you're letting the soy milk come through and then you're coagulating the soy milk. So none of them are like whole, whole, whole foods. But tempeh or seitan, one of the problems I have is that people use it to mimic meat and then they eat the meat like they used to eat meat and that is definitely not healthy. That's too much of processed stuff. Uh, it's not being used as a condiment. If you're having, if you're making like sausage, seitan sausage, and it's still even SOS free, or a lot of people use soy sauce, so it's usually not SOS free, but if you're making it yourself, you can do that. And then they'll just have like, they'll slice it and put it on a ton of crackers. And so you're eating a, not only a bunch of crackers, but you're also eating too much um, of the vital wheat gluten, in my opinion. You're not using it as a condiment. So. I try to not do that or recommend against it. What else? I think we're pretty much done over here. I'm pretty good on this salad. Let's do a dressing. 
Cherry is also asking, what's your take on the vegan keto fad as a short-term quick weight loss jumpstart? Well, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but if you're talking about like the fasting mimicking diet with Walter Longo, I think he's on to something, but I don't do it. I, I have his book. I started his book. I didn't get very far in his book because he talks about animal products a little bit more than I wanted to, and so I sort of was less interested after that and didn't get back into it. But so his is, I don't know if his is a vegan keto fad like you're talking about, but the only time I purposely get into ketosis is if I do an annual maintenance fast, like a water fast, like a True North style prolonged fast for a week. Uh, otherwise, I'm not trying to eliminate certain things out of my diet in order to promote weight loss. Uh, if that's something you want to do and you want to read Walter Longo's book and, and see if that's something that's going to help you with weight loss, then by all means, check it out. I don't know a lot about it, so I won't get in too deep. But if it's a fad, like the word that you used, then I would, I would say that it's probably not good. That word fad isn't very positive, um, especially as it relates to all the other fad diets that we are all very familiar with. Jan asks... Well, let's make a little dressing first. So I've got some walnuts that I meant to soak, and I did not do that because I forgot. But I just took a handful of walnuts, and I'll add a little bit of water to this. This is going to be, you know how Dr. Furman says, eat fats, some kind of nuts or whatever, with your salad because it helps you to digest all of that nutrient dense, all the nutrients themselves. Uh, better than if you had a totally fat-free salad. So this is a fattier salad dressing. There's walnuts in there. I'll put in some of this. Ooh, that looks nice. Avocado, excuse me. Um, let's just spoon in half of this avocado. And then I really like to put in some of this freeze-dried basil that I'm always pubbing to you. Oh, it's so pretty. I grew this and freeze-dried it with the freeze-dryer. So eventually I'm going to have some of this up for sale if you want it. But we'll throw in that. I would maybe throw in, I don't know if it needs much else other than some more water. You could put in um, some lemon juice or some kind of a citrus in there, but I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let's just add some water and we'll blend it. You could do something creamier. I guess you could like add soy milk if you wanted it even creamier, but I think the avocado is going to do, do well enough for us. This might need more water yet. So this is this kind of a bullet blender, just a little blender. You know, I, I'm obviously a big fan of the Vitamix, but I think that's a little more uh, muscle than you need for just making a quick salad dressing. I'll help it along here. Let's see, maybe I need a little more juice. Yeah, we'll add some water. Okay, Jan's asking, what are your favorite restaurants? What modifications do you request when ordering on the menu? That's better. I don't like eating out that much. At first I started by trying to do the whole modification thing and then you realize that one, I feel like I was annoying people and two, I was annoying myself. It was just so much work. I'd rather just show up full to the restaurant. I can do this so easily. I can stuff myself before I go out and then order um, a side salad <laughs> with the balsamic vinegar and I'll just have a little salad So because people need you to eat. Um, otherwise, they get all weird about it. So they want you to eat. They don't want you to sit and watch them eat. So if it, at the least, try to find something. If it's a bowl of fruit or a, maybe there's baked potato that they actually didn't 
paint with butter before they went into the oven um, or else a little side salad. I, I'll usually do that. If we're on vacation and we're going to a vegan restaurant, then yeah, maybe I'll be like, I'll try to seek out some oil-free things or I'll ask some more questions because I want to have a better experience with the food. Or, or I won't and I'll have a cheat sometimes. I'll have an oil cheat. I, I'm always vegan. I would never have anything that is not vegan. But sometimes I'll give in and have some oil but I try not to do it very often. And depending on where you are in the process, you may, that may be a terrible idea for you. Um, so, how do you open these? Oh yeah, there we go. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna toss this salad all together and it's gonna be salad for a day or more. <laughs> That's good there. And I've got some spinach here too. This is all pre-washed, ready to go. Pretty handy. Obviously you pay a premium for it, but okay. And so all I'm gonna do is get a big spoon. So yeah, when I go out, I, I, I try not to go out very often. If I do, I'll try to make it oil-free. If it's a restaurant I know can do oil-free, if it's a place nearby, that might be a lot of dressing, but I can always add other stuff. I think it's good. So I will just straight up toss this sucker so that it's nice and even. You can just pour a dressing on top of your salad if you want and not get the whole thing soggy all at once, um, depending on how much you eat and all that stuff. Um, I don't know, I think that the, the going out and eat thing was something that was more important to me at the beginning when I got onto eating this way, but I sort of just stopped. I, I was less and less interested in it as I went. What a mess. And so I kind of don't have the motivation to do it. We do have this one place that uh, Nick actually wrote them and said, hey, can you do, it's a vegan restaurant. It's kind of a, an order up type of place where you take a number and then they, they'll deliver your food to the table. Um, but they were able to do a, an oil-free menu, but it is really, really salty. So I still try not to eat there too often. Maybe once a month we'll go as a treat, but it's so salty that you know you don't feel amazing after. You feel better than if you had eaten a, a big oil meal. But restaurants are hard. If it's a place in your neighborhood that you want to like go on a regular basis, because you know we should be able to eat this way and still experience all the social good times that we did when we didn't. We should be able. There should be restaurants where we can eat right. <laughs> we, people liked having the food prepared for them. It's you know I liked that. I missed that. I missed that social thing and being able to enjoy it the same as everybody else thinks they are. But. If you can't, then you know, try to talk to the chef and be like, hey, I'm, I come here all the time. Can you do this thing for me? And maybe they'll do this thing for you. Okay, that's my salad. It looks pretty good. Um, it's maybe a little bit more dressing than I would normally put on my salad, but I'm happy with it. So most of the time, a chef, if they think they're, you're going to be a return customer, then they're even more interested in accommodating you. So I would, if, if you really want to go out, try to find one or two places where you can actually ask the chef, hey, what can you do for me because I eat bunny. But I, I don't do it too often. Uh, Sarah asks, oh, we have some vegan questions. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty vegan, so. She's asking what I did with leather when I went vegan. And when, when I first went vegan, I, uh, I did it for health, not for animals. That I kind of developed my ethical side further along. It took me, it took me more time. Okay, pretty nice looking salad. Good dressing. If you want a dressing that's less fat, I mean, it's pretty simple. Choose different ingredients. Use fruit. Use vinegars. Um, this is a, a fattier dressing, I admit. I'm going to eat a little bit, and I hope it's not noisy and offensive. Yeah, I just, maybe I won't eat. 
So I uh, did not get rid of all of my leather stuff. I still maybe have a couple of things, but I almost never use them because I, I, I feel like embarrassed to myself to, to wear like a leather, I don't know, what, what do I even have that's leather? I don't even know anymore. I don't really use it. But I didn't like go out of my way to throw it out. And if you're not that kind of a vegan, then you don't need to do that either. Like if it's really, really important to you and that if you're seen wearing leather, that means that you're perpetuating this system. Oops, nice. I'm really good at presenting the food as you can see. So I'll just keep pouring it out of the bowls and, and displaying it like that. Nice, really nice. It's a good looking soup. So it's a, you gotta just decide. If, if you don't wanna perpetuate a system and so therefore you don't wanna be seen with leather because otherwise that means that you're not vegan enough, then get rid of your leather. Uh, but don't let people get on your case about it. You, you gotta do what's right for you. You need to find peace. And if that means that you're going to do like I did and gradually come into the ethical side, and then that's what you gotta do. I think I now have these, uh, the vegan Birkenstocks that I love. Um, you know, you can get pretty much anything synthetic now, but your old stuff, you know, you gotta make a decision. Are you gonna trash your car because it has leather seats? You may get to a point where you're gonna do that and that's fine. But, you know, get your car reupholstered. I don't know. I, I've never been in that position. I don't have leather seats, so I don't know what I would do. Uh, it depends on my financial situation, obviously. You need to, you need to figure out what's going to work for you. Um, but if you're, like, part of a really vegan group and they look down on that, I mean, you're just going to have to have those kinds of conversations with people and be like, hey, I'm not ready to get rid of everything. This is where I am. Meet me where I am. I'm working towards something bigger. Maybe I'll get there. I'm aware of it. Don't be combative and start a big fight over it. Vegan cats is the next question. Um, I, I don't have cats, but I don't know anyone if they feed their cats vegan. I think I watched a video where High Carb Hannah said that she feeds her cats vegan, but yet they live in the desert and the cats are hunting constantly. So I, I don't think cats should be vegan probably. It seems like that's not a thing, but I don't know. I'm not educated on this. If The more I say, the more trouble I'm gonna get into. So my dog, we feed our dog vegan dog food because the dog does really well on vegan food, but it's not a carnivore. It's not a cat. So I don't know what to say about cats. Uh, that's a good question for the group. Maybe there's some other people that have, have, have struggled with that and have figured that out. But I'm not, I'm not sure what to say. Um, it would be really hard for me to have a cat and have to buy non-vegan things. I really don't like doing it. But I'm not, if I see you, have, you have a cat, am I gonna shame you for doing it? No, I'm not. I'm just not going to. Sarah, what kinds of non-food vegan items do you use? Um, well, if I get like a body product, and this took me some time to figure out too, but I'll look for it to say cruelty free or the like, or vegan or whatever. Um, just do a little research on Google. I don't know, I don't know off the top of my head. With shoes, I said the Birkenstocks, cleaning supplies. Uh, I think most cleaning supplies are good, like the seventh generation and stuff, but I, uh, I can't remember checking for a while, but I think like when we were going through and changing our ways that we did check, and so now I don't remember looking at those specific bottles recently. But I mean, if, if it was a product that was not cruelty free, I would want to eliminate it. I mean, it's too easy not to, because there are plenty of other options out there, right? So, uh, what was your most helpful takeaway from the NHA? The NHA conference, that's the National Health Association. I've talked about, they have a magazine called Health Science Magazine. You can go to their website, is healthscience.org. And that group, it, I didn't really know until I went to the conference what kind of conference it was gonna be, like who it was geared toward. I didn't know if it was gonna be geared toward like 
um, medical professionals that are looking into becoming more plant-based. But the lineup of, was all the doctors that I like that you know I got started by listening on YouTube, uh, um, reading their books, etc. And so I was obviously very interested for that reason because I wanted to see these doctors in person, have a chance to say hi, whatever it is. But it turns out that the audience is the same as our audience in Well Your World. It is people that want to get on track with their way of eating that may be being introduced to it for the first time at the NHA conference. They may be like me who's pretty seasoned at this and just wants reinforcement and to keep being a part of that community because you make lots of connections with people in the audience and the doctors and whoever it is and I want to keep that coming. So even though I didn't necessarily need the information the same as someone next to me that may have heart disease and is there for a very different reason than I am, it was very valuable for both of us. And, and so I can see that the audience are, are all people that are, would be really great for the, our group. So knowing that, next year I'm going to, maybe there'll be an opportunity to table and try to tell people about our group because we all know from experience that the one thing that's missing is support. We can try, you, can, you can mechanically perform the tasks necessary to get healthy, to eat the right way, but it can be really hard when you don't have the support. When you're going to family dinner parties and you're getting crap from people about it and they think they're funny. And, uh, but we do need support and we do need to see other people's stories like uh, people that are new to the group will post their story and uh, others will post their food and, and updates and the, these are things that are really valuable to people like us uh, as far as staying on track and staying motivated and feeling like someone else is going through the same challenges that we're experiencing. And that was awesome, that, that they were able to get 300 people in the audience that are people like us, that are wanting to see the doctor. So I have some really good suggestions about how to grow the event and to do some breakout sessions where like, you could do goal setting. And um, the other thing I want, the other type of subscription that I want to offer in Well Your World is to do some goal setting and uh, like, you know, set your goals, I'm going to do 30 days, these are my rules, and, and then uh, hold each other accountable in little, in little pods of like 30 people or something in a, in a Zoom conference room that's not recorded, that's totally private. Um, our little Well Your World Weight Watchers <laughs> or something. But anyway, the most helpful takeaways were that it, this is, there is momentum behind what we're doing. There is so much opportunity to bring more people into this through what I'm doing with, I think, social media and YouTube and everything, and then, and then having a forum like the NHA conference where all of the doctors that believe in these same diet and lifestyle methods to achieving health, uh, it's amazing. Uh, you can show up there and get all of this information and meet people that are going through what you're going through. And so, uh, I don't know, that's, I guess that's my takeaway. So, that's it. We made this nice big salad. Stuff yourself on salad to start, and then move on to the soup. The soup, let's, let's see how I did here. I haven't tasted it. The soup's really good. I think I spiced it just right, and all, you're just winging it. That's how I cook. So the cooking demos I'm gonna do We'll focus on various things. We can practice chopping if people want that. We can do some knife sharpening if people want that. We can do snacks. We can do how to set up a whole taco bar. We can do uh, tamales. We can do enchiladas. We can do a burger thing, an Italian thing. We can, you know, we can do more recipe recipes too so that you have something in your arsenal for dinner parties and times when other people are coming over and you don't want, they're not ready to eat like we do with just a plain old soup like this. They may need something a little fancier like maybe uh, something out of like the straight up food style or Michael Greger's um, How Not to Die Cookbook or something like that. Um, so. There are a lot of opportunities. I'd love to hear your feedback. Tell me if this is useful. This particular recording I am going to put on YouTube. In the future, like I was saying earlier on in this video, if you missed it, I want to do a subscription type of thing where you pay a 
price per month and you have access to, you can be live and we'll have interaction like in the other two cooking demos I did in the Zoom conference room, people were talking back and forth to me. They were asking questions. When I was doing something, they stopped me and said, hey, how did you do that or whatever it is. And so it'll be interactive um, or you can just observe uh, and then the replays will be available to you as soon as they've been, as soon as I upload them. The nice thing is, the live, the, a lot of the live cooking demos you're seeing, first of all, they're not this quality of image. And then second, the replays are a reproduction of the live feed, which is a lower quality video. I'm recording this right now in full 1080 HD. So the replays that you're going to have access to are super high quality. Um, I'm going to continue to improve, such as when I left the wrong camera showing for a while and was uh, doing something else. But that's just me because I have this hardware button that I have the ability to switch through the cameras. Um, but all of this will be really high quality, available for replay. And then I want to do a tier two of our, of our subscription where people that want not just access to the videos, but they need that extra boost. We'll do some goal setting together. We'll do the 30 day challenges, whatever it is. And we're going to hold each other accountable and we're going to, because you need the extra motivation, not just to see people's posts, but to answer in, you know, once a week and say how things are going. So that's what I, I'm kind of working toward. And then obviously I want to work on those freeze-dried sauces. I want to start with that freeze-dried cheese sauce that I think you'll really like. And so that you can just prepare some cooked brown rice, cooked uh, quinoa, lentils. You can build your own Buddha bowl. You can steam some broccoli and cauliflower and zucchini and, and have all that on a bowl. And then just throw this sauce on to make it, to make it uh, taste really good. Um, and so I want to do that with the cheese sauce, a gravy, like a kind of a bean sauce, a curry sauce, all the, a salsa, all these things that you can just quickly blend with boiling water to rehydrate them and pour them on whatever. So you could have just loads of um, potatoes cooked in the fridge, rice cooked, a whole week's worth of, of your starchy stuff. And then all you got to do is make yourself salad and then reconstitute your sauce and pour it on top of the things that are already prepped and ready. So there's, there would be like no need to use your brain at all <laughs> with your cooking. So that's what I'm after. Please give me some feedback. Tell me if this is something you would watch as a replay or, or something that you'd like to watch live or that you would want to pay for in a subscription. I'm putting a lot more work into Well Your World. I'm spending money on equipment and all these things because I'm seeing that it's helping people. But I also, the more time I put into this, the less time I'm putting into my old job. And so I have to somehow find a way to get compensated for it. So I hope that works for people. Um, I look forward to hearing your comments and I will see you on the next video. Bye.